It's a Thursday morning and we welcome you back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show Express on SABC3 where it's baby talk time. Yes, it is. Uh, we're joined this morning once again by occupational therapist and uh, uh, co-author of a range of books on pregnancy and motherhood and uh, a beacon of hope and source of light <laughs> and information and knowledge on all things we need to know. Uh, Meg Pora, good to have you here. I, I know someone's been doing his reading. Um, <laughs> yeah. And last week we started the segment and we got such a lovely response. So thanks so much for that, Meg. We have to start at the beginning, which obviously is pregnancy, and we are looking at what is a very singular journey for the women and the couples that are going through that, but there are so many things that everyone shares in. And I think we're going to kick it off this week looking at some of those habits. We know that obviously certain things do kick in. Um, you've got to do away with other things. Some of it happens easily, some of it not so much. So we're going to get into that, but we are in no way saying what you are doing is wrong. If you are pregnant right now, you are right. I'm just going to say that straight <laughs> off the bat. Uh, but Meg, really, really awesome, awesome discussion. Absolutely. Mm. And so let's kick off with some of the bad habits. That, uh, food. Food, I think, is the easiest one to start off with. And uh, this misconception that one eats for two. But let's first start with the fact that easy, <laughs> easy options, nibble around, because I'm craving that and I'm craving this. And yeah. how, is, uh, is that necessarily first? Have you had again? cravings? Have, have you been sent out to get, like, yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which I don't mind. It's, it's absolutely, absolutely cool. But talk to us about that. Yeah, no, look, I mean, the, the one myth is that you have to eat for two, and that really isn't true. In actual fact, you want to keep your, up your previous eating habits and mm -hmm. just add in a, a few more calories. So, like, just a tub of yogurt and a handful of nuts is kind of the um, length to which you would want to go for extra calories. And, you know, if you're hungry, as long as you're eating healthy food, um, and that's the critical thing, stick yes. with the healthy food, and try and cut out the junk food as much as possible. Where does the, are there good cravings? Are there cravings that kick in because you actually do need that? Because your, your body is telling you things all the time through that Yeah, phase. you know, they, they actually say that your sense of smell becomes heightened, which is why you go off certain foods, which, mm -hmm. you know, which was to protect us. But the cravings, we're not entirely sure why we crave. I mean, sometimes there might be some sort of nutritional deficiency, but that's less likely, um, for instance, amongst the people who would be watching this show. That's very much less likely. Um, but if you are craving something, you must definitely take a nutritional supplement so mm. that you're not trying to get the ad added um, kind of nutri nutrients through whatever you're cra craving. Mm. And if your craving's healthy, so if you're craving things like mangoes and beans, by all means, go for Yuffle. it. <laughs> but if you're craving milk tart, like I did, then just hold off a little bit because otherwise you're going to pack on the pounds. Yeah. And of course, this is the time when we are opening our lines to you for conversation. Give us a call on 021-430-9881. Um, gestational diabetes is a very... Mm very serious mm. thing mm. and it can come about as a result of uh, mommy to be's eating habits let's talk about how it happens and why we actually it had that scare and it's, yeah. it's amazing how that had never been a factor in her life yeah. going into that phase yeah. and then suddenly it was test test yeah, yeah. test yeah yeah so um, gestational diabetes really is a risk because mums tend to put on a lot of weight then and the babies are born big as well and so we really don't like to have gestational diabetes come about one of the ways you can prevent it is by limiting sugars, particularly processed carbohydrates and processed sugars in your diet. Mm. So eat you know, more of the proteins, um, more of the unprocessed carbohydrates. So if you're going to go for um, carbohydrates, make sure that it's things like potatoes and sweet potatoes and butternut rather than bread and particularly not sugary carbohydrates like cakes and cookies. Mm. So yeah, that's going to be something that most moms should really cut out through pregnancy and definitely not all the sweets and chocolates, you know. So. Do you mean cut out like cut out or are you talking it's like... not us, we are saying this. <laughs> that's the thing and I'm, I'm you're trying to manage expectations <laughs> too. Yeah, no, I actually do think, I think for most of us we shouldn't be eating that anyway, uh, maybe sure. a, a treat once a week, but certainly in pregnancy it really is a risk and yeah, don't eat sugary sweets and carbs. Mm. Building on that, fitness, uh, and I think people forget how quickly, I mean, we feel it in our day-to-day -day lives, yeah. how quickly you can lose routine, and we rely on fitness for so many reasons, but obviously staying in shape. Mm. How do we approach fitness through this phase? How much is all right? Should we be kind of building up a, a store before we go in there, making sure we're super fit? How, how do you approach, and I say we, obviously, very likely. Mums and dads. Yeah, um, but uh, where does fitness sit in the, the grand scheme? You do need to be fit. I mean, um, labor is, you actually need to be fit for. And so I do think mums need to exercise in pregnancy. The rule of thumb is that if you've exercised before, so if you were a dancer, like potentially your, your yeah. wife was, um, or if you were... Um, she you was know, a machine through absolutely. that phase, so, yeah. so then she should actually continue with that. In mm. fact, any exercise that you were doing prior to pregnancy, 
pregnancy you can do, with the exception of cross-country skiing. Thankfully, we don't have that here. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> and, <laughs> can't do that. And you must watch cycling as well, particularly as you get and horse riding. Places where you can fall, that's more of the issue than the actual exercise. Okay. So whatever you were doing before, keep going with it. Um, and if you were very sedentary before, then you need to take up don't exercise. Shock your system too but much. don't shock your system. So mm. go for like good long walks and that type of thing. And do you think a partner can play an important role in being that encouraging factor to yeah. mommy to be? And <laughs> you're going to make me emotional, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Dad plays a very important role. So what you're going to want to be doing is actually joining her on a journey, whether it's healthy eating exercise, um, giving up those nasty habits, anything that's going on for her, any shift she's needing to make, I really do feel like Dad should be part of that journey too. Yeah. We'd love to hear from you if you are going through this journey, 21 430 He's about to go through it, I've been through it. It's the most amazing time to form a bond between just the two of you, never mind the little one coming into the world. Um, but it comes with a lot of craziness. So we'd love to hear your questions, your comments. <laughs> we can relate. 0 to 1 4 3 0 9 8 1 That's the you're, number to you're dial. You're not allowed to say craziness. You're not allowed Cra to say that. I didn't say it. Meg said it, actually. <laughs> I think Meg said it earlier. I was just quoting her. <laughs> <laughs> it's my feel-good breakfast show. All right. Welcome back to your feel-good breakfast show. Uh, on this Thursday, yes, uh, we are talking... Mommy Matters right now. Um, and we would like you to give us a call on 83 uh, Talk to us about your concerns, your questions, comments, anything you can contribute because we're talking about bad habits uh, during pregnancy. Um, and of course, Meg Forrest, yeah, um, our tome of knowledge when it comes to this space. And of course, a mom herself who has, who has been through this, this journey. Um, we do have a caller online. That was very quick. Desiree, thank you so much for <laughs> connecting with us. Desiree, a very good morning from the panel here. Um, hopefully you're doing really well this morning. What is your comment or question? Oh, hello, guys. So hey. I just basically wanted to give you um, some, some tips on how to get over bad habits because I just had my second pregnancy okay. at home with baby now. And basically, it's so easy to fall into that rut of, you know what, I'm gaining weight anyway. Why make healthy food choices if the weight's just piling on regardless? But I had a discussion with a dietitian, and she actually said to me that now more than ever, even though it's important to eat healthily all the time, mm -hmm. now is the most important time to make sure that whatever you put in your mouth is healthy and nutritionally beneficial to your body because mm. your baby is like a sponge. Yeah. It absorbs everything. Sure. And that really resonated with me, even as though it being my second pregnancy. So the tip that I have to give to pregnant ladies is just, you know, think about that every time you order something at a restaurant or you're making something for breakfast. Mm. So what I would do is... I would order a salad with everything I ordered in a restaurant. I would make sure that whatever I order for breakfast had some sort of greens or microgreens or something nutritionally beneficial in that meal. And then, yes, yeah, sure, if you wanted the biscuits or the treats, let it be an occasional one mm -hmm. rather than a habitual one. Yeah. Oh, Desiree, sure. thank you so much. Congratulations yes. on the second child as well. Absolutely. Um, it, it just sounds like you're taking it in your stride. Well yeah. done for that. And some brilliant, <laughs> and I, brilliant advice. I guess taken from that, Meg, mm. asking the question, while you're eating whatever it is you're yeah. putting in your mouth, would I feed yeah. this to my baby right now? Yeah. Yeah. And I loved what she said. It's every mouthful counts and make it count. So don't eat those empty calories because sure. you're just making a wrong choice in that moment. And one of the things that she said right at the beginning, which is so true, is that you get this tiny window, it's nine months, in which you get to lay down the neural foundations, the, the brain foundations for the rest of your child's life. And so truly, every piece of nutrition builds your baby's brain and body, and you just get nine months to do that. And it's, you've seen through the scans yeah. how quickly that yeah. process yeah. happens, yeah. mind-blowing how yeah. quickly yeah. that yeah. life, that beautiful little thing is formed. So mm. can I flip the coin over mm. now? And let's look at, we are talking about bad habits that mm. um, not just related to pregnancy, but those that exist beforehand, and how difficult it can be to break certain habits like smoking. Mm. How bad is, we know smoking is, is bad mm. for you in mm. the healthiest mm. states. Yeah. Um, how bad is smoking for a pregnant woman? So there are a couple of real risk factors that go along with smoking. The first one is that we know that babies who are born to moms who smoke in pregnancy have a chance of being low birth weight and born prematurely, which are high risk factors for problems later. Um, so you want to and avoid traumatic. smoking. And very traumatic. It's not the way you want to start your baby's life. 
There also seems to be some evidence that it changes the way that the brain develops in some way. We're not entirely sure how that happens. We think it's got to do with the pruning of neural networks. So you need to you need to be careful in terms of the brain there, yeah. because of the chemicals. And there's also a, chan a higher chance of SIDS, which is cot death after the baby's born, mm. if they if you've smoked through pregnancy. So those are three brilliant reasons to stop smoking <laughs> aside yeah. from your own health. So mm -hmm. smoking is a big big no-no in pregnancy. Yeah. And what about then uh, alcohol that usually is associated with smoking? <laughs> This, this picture is rather like, alarming. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, where yeah. some people go, yeah, have the occasional yeah. glass yeah. of wine yeah. once a month, once a week. Yeah. Yeah. Is it always it a case of you having to cut out entirely? Yeah. Like, don't even touch that. So the thing is that we don't know which babies' brains are fragile. And so for some babies, even one drink a week in pregnancy can cause brain damage, a type of brain damage. We call it fetal, fetal alcohol syndrome or fetal mm. alcohol effects. For other babies, they're a little bit more robust. But you don't know which baby yours is and so the rule of thumb is absolutely no alcohol in pregnancy and you know there's a lot of rumors that fly around saying don't worry you know one, one beer a week through yeah, pregnancy one or one a day the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm of the take that you've got only nine months to do it just make it count and don't drink during alcohol uh, during pregnancy yeah so there, there are absolutely unequivocally no benefits that could occur from Definitely. Anything. No antioxidants, nothing. Nothing, no, um, definitely. Okay, let's take it a, a step even further. And this, during my research, now was probably the, the most horrifying thing that I've heard in a long time. That's the Western Cape has the highest rate of fetal alcohol syndrome in the world. Yeah, that, that's a correct statistic. And, um, you know, it could be historically related to the DOP system that was, um, the, you must know, surely of, be. Yeah. of paying, paying wages and alcohol for, on the wine farms, which now is obviously not legal. But um, it, I, it, whatever it is, we have the highest incidence in the world and it causes brain damage and, um, and other deformities as well. So alcohol is really a shocker in pregnancy. Yeah. So in what ways can mommies to be eliminate that desire or temptation to have a drink and you know set up a home in such a way that it yeah. it's conducive it's to that kind yeah. of behavior. <coughs> yeah, look, I definitely Excuse think me. not having the alcohol in the house is helpful. Yeah. Um, I also find you know I often like, like to have my glass of wine in the evening, and I find that I've if I've sustained my energy through the day, eating healthily during the day, I don't have that sugar dip at five o'clock, which is often when you start to think of having that glass of wine. So eat, eating healthily, which we spoke about just now, actually relates to decreasing alcohol consumption as well. Mm. And if you need to, get yourself out of the social settings where you traditionally would drink. Um, you know, no, no more late night parties, That's girls. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now, please take everything that we've said, obviously, from a guy's perspective mm. with a pinch of salt this morning. But, Meg, you really are amazing. Thank you so much for that. Okay. Um, to all the new parents to be out there, you got this, guys. You got this. You can join us again next week for another edition of Mommy Matters. And you can find Meg at, at Meg Fora. That's Fora with an E at the end. Um, and post your questions as well. She'll get right on it.